Ignition flight. By the time America's third mission to land on the moon, Apollo 13, lifted off on April 11, 1970, travel to the desolate orb seemed about as noteworthy as commuting to work. I think the only mention in the New York Times was on page 67 of the weather page. Very few people uh, in the news media had, managed, uh, had manned the uh, news uh, desk at, uh, at the Johnson Space Center. That changed three days into the mission when a terrifying explosion rocked the spacecraft carrying astronauts Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hayes. It had been a major sound, uh, metallic echoing uh, bang uh, came through the spacecraft. So we knew it was nothing normal, uh, quite something probably bad. And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. At NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, uh, Houston we've had a problem. Flight Director Gene Krantz frantically worked to turn a certain catastrophe into a successful recovery. And we had uh, three crewmen in a dead spacecraft 200,000 miles from Earth going towards the moon. Getting them back alive meant around-the-clock problem solving and abandoning the mission they trained for. I was sick to my stomach because I knew we uh, weren't going to be able to land on the moon. For the crewmen of the Apollo 13, we'll hold silence for a moment, please. As the world followed the crisis on radio and television, Krantz's mantra during Apollo 13 became the title of his book, Failure is Not an Option. The crisis lasted the best part of almost four days, and that was where maybe the world's attention was able to be focused upon this particular event more than some of the other missions that we focused on. The team that was trained to handle emergencies like that and like many other things did their job uh, with great credit, and as a result, uh, the, the spacecraft and uh, and the crew came back safely. Years later, when we decided to write a book about the story of Apollo 13, that I got the feeling that, yes, the flight was a failure in one aspect, but in the other aspect, it was a triumph on how people can take an almost certain catastrophe, the mission control people and the flight crew, working together, figuring out solutions to crisis that we didn't plan for, we didn't train for, and get this spacecraft back home. Hey, we've got a problem here. Lovell's book titled Lost Moon was the basis for the 1995 Apollo 13 Hollywood blockbuster. Houston, we have a problem featuring actor Tom Hanks as Lovell. Sometimes stories that we see in movies are based in reality and you have to sort of increase the drama. This one was a real drama. It was not clear that these guys were going to be able to get home alive. And so that's why it makes such a good story and why I think uh, it grabbed people's attention. It's a story highlighted at the Adler Planetarium's Mission Moon exhibit, showcasing equipment from Apollo 13 donated by Lovell who hopes to inspire a new generation of explorers. Quite a few of the population just here coming through the Adler Planetarium wasn't around when uh, we actually did our uh, Apollo flights. While an Adler Planetarium event to celebrate Apollo 13's 50th anniversary is postponed due to the coronavirus outbreak. I hereby declare that this was a successful mission. The celebration is moving online. The voyage of Apollo 13 dramatized its risks. Where visitors to the Adler and NASA social media sites can see and hear highlights of the U.S. space program's successful failure. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Chicago, Illinois.